Another three days have passed, and they have been eventful for the space industry with a number of noteworthy occurrences. Of particular interest are the test of a rocket designed for launch from Mars in the near future, the transport of the last ICPS upper stage, and the launch of India's PSLV rocket, which has deployed seven satellites. A number of spacecraft have landed on Mars, but no one has ever launched from the surface of the Red Planet. But that should change in the near future. The US and European space agencies are collaborating on a Mars sample return project to bring scientifically valuable samples from the Red Planet to Earth. This will provide scientists with the opportunity to analyze these materials with the most sophisticated instruments available. However, transporting a piece of Mars to Earth is no simple task. NASA and ESA have thus established a series of missions with a common goal, transportation of the sample cases between the two planets. In this episode, we will focus on the Mars Ascent Vehicle, or MAV. It is a rocket that will be responsible for transporting the sample cases from the surface of Mars to its orbit. NASA has recently released footage of the two stages of this rocket being tested. This is the solid fuel first stage ignition that occurred on April 7th at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The ignition took place in a vacuum chamber and the engine was cooled to minus 20 degrees Celsius in order to simulate conditions on Mars as accurately as possible. Engineers were particularly interested in how the innovative thrust vectoring control system would perform. Conventional systems are not effective at the low temperatures that the MAV will experience on Mars. After ignition and analysis of the hardware, the system proved successful. This successful ignition also brought the innovative technology closer to the actual operational usage. Nevertheless, this was far from its last test. The new system is also going to be tested by exposure to vibrations, vacuum and extreme temperature fluctuations to assess its behavior in a cosmic environment. The following footage was taken on March 29th at Northrop Grumman's Elkton, Maryland facility. Again, the stage was cooled to approximately minus 20 degrees Celsius. Note that the stage rotates during its operation. This will stabilize it in flight. The system that will deliver the samples to Mars orbit will have no room for error. If it fails, everything will be lost. Both tests have demonstrated that the development of the MAV is progressing in the right direction. Reliability and confidence in the technology employed will be paramount in this case. The U.S. Space Launch System SLS Heavy Launcher is planned to employ the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, or ICPS, for its initial three missions. The first unit for the Artemis I mission has already been utilized, while the second unit for the Artemis II is already in Florida. Today we will look at the third and final ICPS upper stage. This footage was captured in late July in Decatur, Alabama, where United Launch Alliance, the manufacturer of the ICPS stages, has its manufacturing facility. This upper stage is intended for the Artemis III mission, which will bring humans back to the moon after more than half a century. This stage will be responsible for sending the Orion spacecraft and its four-person crew towards lunar orbit. The ICPS upper stage is based on the well-established design of the Delta IV upper stage. Its construction is dominated by two tanks, one for liquid oxygen, and the other for liquid hydrogen. These propellants are then combusted by a single RL-10 rocket engine. The 
The final ICPS was loaded onto a ship and dispatched to Florida. There, near the Kennedy Space Center, it will undergo final checkups and preparations. You may be wondering what will be employed on SLS rockets on subsequent missions if this is the last specimen of the ICPS upper stage. For future missions, commencing with Artemis IV, NASA will use an Advanced Exploration Upper Stage EUS, that will augment the SLS rocket's payload capacity to the moon by 40%. But more on that in the future. The last orbital launch of July in 2023 was conducted by India. At 1 o'clock Universal Time on the 30th of July, a polar satellite launch vehicle, commonly known as PSLV, was launched from the Satish Dhawan Space Center. And we have a liftoff, the PSLV C-56 first stage burning bright and this particular flight was of the CA variant, which stands for core alone, as the side solid rocket boosters were not used with the central stage. Moreover, the amount of propellant on the fourth stage of the CA variant is reduced by 400 kilograms. The payload capacity of this version for a sun-synchronous orbit at an altitude of 622 kilometers is 1100 kilograms. The target orbit of this mission was relatively uncommon. It was a circular orbit at an altitude of 535 kilometers, but it had an inclination of only 5 degrees to the equator. Since the maneuver for an orbital plane change significantly reduced the payload capacity of the launch vehicle, the launched payload weighted only 420 kilograms. And what was the payload? The primary satellite was the Singapore DS-SAR, weighing approximately 350 kilograms. This satellite is equipped with a synthetic aperture radar antenna, which can be seen folded in its upper part. Thanks to it, the DS-SAR will achieve a spatial resolution of one meter. The satellite is dual purpose and will be operated by Singapore's Defense Science and Technology Agency, DSTA. The launch vehicle also carried six CubeSats, five from Singapore and one from the United Kingdom. They will serve for a variety of purposes, including testing new technologies and Earth observation. Thank you for watching today's episode of Spaceflight News. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. To ensure you don't miss any future episodes, be sure to subscribe.